Zendesk SLA updates. First of all, SLAs in Zendesk are service level agreements. It's a way for you to keep accountable to your clients that you deliver the service you said you will. What does that mean? What does that mean? What does that mean? Well, if somebody buys your service or your product, you make a commitment that if they have a problem with their whatever they bought, that you'll get back to them within a certain amount of time. That's accountability. All companies do that. And if you don't, then maybe you should ask yourself if you want to be a big company. Hi, my name is Dominic. I'm a customer experience enthusiast. I've been in the field for over 15 years. This is my 11th year as a Zendesk consultant. Now, this update in Zendesk has been long awaited. And the gist of it is, in the past, if you created a ticket for an end user for one of your customers as a Zendesk admin or a Zendesk agent inside Zendesk, you couldn't follow an SLA for this ticket. You'd have to keep track of it, follow it manually, and somehow remember to update the ticket. I don't know how, but you had to remember it. That's pretty caca if you ask me, but with this new update, everything has been sorted. So let's jump right into Zendesk and see how this looks like. We're going to walk through these features and you're going to see for yourself what this means. All right, so I'm in my Zendesk. Whoops, I am available online. No, thank you. Offline. All right, cool. Let's go to the four squares and go to admin center. And then we go to objects and rules. And then we go to service level agreements. Ah, you could have searched them in the search bar here as well, but I'm old school. I like to follow it this way. Now, these advanced settings, they work if you create a new policy or you just update an existing one. Now, I'm going to go ahead and create a new one just for the sake of argument. Create a policy. I'll give it a name. Let's call this one testing advanced settings for SLAs. I do this so I'll remember to delete this because then my system becomes all piled up with stuff. And by the way, a word from our sponsor, it's us. It's um, Dominic the CX guy <laughs> and my team. So I'm going to give you a pro tip. Don't clog up your system with too many business rules that if you think that oh, I'm just going to leave it there because I'll remember to delete it, you will not remember to delete it. So just test it, delete it afterwards, right afterwards. It's kind of like brushing your teeth. You don't say, uh, you know what? I I'm not going to brush them today. I'm going to brush them tomorrow. No, you brush them today because you ate today. So pretty much same analogy here. You test it, you don't like it, delete it. Testing advanced settings for SLAs, no description necessary. I don't need it. Next, conditions. I'm just going to go with a brand condition. So what this means is if I, what tickets do I want this SLA to be applied to? And in this case, I'm just going to do it by brand. So the ticket brand is, I'm going to say Roca Work, which is our business. And then no any conditions. I just want the tickets that are belonging to this brand to have this SLA. All right, next. Okay, so you need at least two metrics. So you need reply metrics. So first reply time. All right, so let's say for urgent tickets, uh, I'm going to go uh, for urgent. I'm going to say four hours. I need you to come back to customers in four hours. High priority, six hours, normal eight hours and low priority. Well, you know what? 16 hours. I'm going to go with business hours. So business hours means that I have a schedule set up in Zendesk. If you don't know how to set up a schedule, I have a lesson somewhere on the channel. OK, now as you scroll a bit lower, you'll see here advanced settings. So let's dive into this puppy. So click it. All right. So let's see what has been activated by default and what I can activate afterwards. Now, let's go over them one by one, because this is going to be so much more explicit than if I just uh, ramble about, you know, the gist of it. First reply starts when it's by default selected to when an end user submits a request with a public comment. Classic way of submitting a ticket, right? Somebody sends you an email, says, hey, I need help, turns into a ticket in Zendesk. Boom, SLA applied. Good. When an agent forwards an email from an end user to create a ticket. So the agent receives uh, an email in their personal email and they say, uh, you know what? I, I need this as a ticket to remember it. They forward it into the Zendesk um, system with the Zendesk uh, support address that you use. And boom, this gets created into a ticket and SLA is applied. Good. When an agent creates a child ticket from side conversations. Side conversations, a way for you to create child tickets and send messages to Slack when there's an update that you need. Or, you know, to just have a conversation on the side of a ticket with one of your partners or one of your agents. Doesn't matter. Okay, now this one. When a ticket is created for an end user with a public comment. Yes, I want this. Well, this means that if I create a ticket for a customer as an agent in Zendesk, I want the SLA to start ticking. Why not? So this is getting applied to it. 
you have no idea what kind of workarounds we had to do in the past as Zendesk admins to go around this one. Jesus Christ, so happy it's here. When any ticket is created for an end user with an internal note. Yes, please. So again, I create a ticket as an Zendesk agent. I create a ticket for the customer, but it's with a private note. Again, I would like to keep being accountable with an SLA. Why? Because for SLAs, I can, you know, filter in the views and I can also create reminders like automations. Like, hey, this ticket is being breached and uh, you should do something about it. So this is uh here wow this one i like a lot so when a light agent forwards an email from an end user to create a ticket wow so very powerful and uh, light agents as you know are a sort of a whoop de doop de kind of unicorn <laughs> type of account they do have access to Xenas. They do not have the capability to uh, post public replies or modify ticket properties. However, they can put internal notes. So in this case, a light agent receives uh, an email from you know a customer asking for something and then just forward it in Xenas and it gets created as a ticket and then SLA is applied to it. Nice, I want it. Okay, when an agent creates a ticket for themselves as the requester. Nice, I like this one too. So I create a ticket for myself to remember to do something and then I have an SLA applied to it. I'm not going to enable this one. I don't know, this one creates too much of a pile. I'm a bit old school. Um, I don't fully use pen and paper, but when I do, I freaking remember it. So some things are better left for you to write down in your notes, in your laptop, in your computer, uh, or even better, on a freaking piece of paper. So anyway, on this one, I just drew something for my son. There's no notes in here. It's mama, papa, and a very shitty car that I, I was able to draw. All right, so add. So now I can save this policy and I'm done. I really like this update. I think it's a great use for productivity increase in Zendesk. And if an agent creates a ticket on behalf of a customer, then that gets an SLA and I love it because then I'll be able to receive notifications just like any other type of ticket. I'll receive a notification and tell me like, hey, I'm actually due to answer, to do something on this ticket, which is great. So it keeps me a little bit more accountable. I can filter in the views as an agent and I think that's a great productivity increase. Also, it's great for Zendesk because they're adding stuff and everybody likes that. If you've enjoyed this content, please like and subscribe. I'd be really grateful and uh, have a nice day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.